The situation on the front lines in Ukraine remains without major changes, with the Russian military and the armed forces of the Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, and the Lugansk People's Republic, LPR, preparing to develop their operations in the Donbas region. On April 2nd and 3rd, intense fighting was reported in Mariupol city. Russian forces and DPR units are currently carrying out the final stage of the operation to secure the city. The remaining members of Kiev's forces focused their defense in the city port and the Azovstal plant areas. The efforts to evacuate the remaining civilians in Mariupol continue to be hindered by Kiev's authorities. On April 2nd and 3rd, Russian forces opened several humanitarian corridors to help civilians leave the city. However, Ukrainian nationalists continue to threaten these routes. A solution to this problem is yet to be found. Russian forces and LPR units also worked on April 2nd and 3rd to set conditions for a large advance towards Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, and Bakhmut. During the same period, units of the LPR continued their advance on positions of the Ukrainian 57th Infantry Brigade seeking to block Boroskove from the east and south. On April 4th, developing their offensive, DPR units captured the fortified area and took control over the village of Novobakhmutovka. During the fighting, up to a company of the Ukrainian 25th Airborne Brigade was destroyed. Units of the People's Militia of the LPR advanced two kilometers more and blocked the settlement of Novotoshkovskoye from the east and south. Meanwhile, the Russian military continued its missile strikes on military targets in different parts of Ukraine. On April 2nd, over 100 members of Prokiev forces were eliminated in the missile strike on a military headquarters in Kharkiv city. Russian forces also carried out a strike with high-precision air-launched missiles on targets near the railway stations of Lozovaya and Pavlograd. The strike destroyed armored vehicles, ammunition, and fuel tanks set to reinforce the Ukrainian troops in Donbas. The Milgorod military airfield in the Poltava region was also placed out of service as a result of a missile strike. Several Ukrainian combat helicopters and warplanes, as well as fuel and aviation weapons depots, were destroyed. On April 3rd, high-precision air-launched missiles destroyed large fuel reserves in the Konstantin Ovka Nikolaev region, the Slavutta Rovno region, and in Ternopil. From these facilities, fuel was being supplied to Ukrainian troops in the Nikolaevsky and Donetsk districts. Moreover, a missile attack on the Belovnoye airport in the suburbs of Nikolaev destroyed at least three Ukrainian helicopters and a large fuel storage facility. Another missile strike on the Valsilkov military airport in the Kiev region destroyed the aviation and air defense center of the Ukrainian Air Force. Furthermore, a strike with high-speed naval and air-launched missiles destroyed an oil refinery and three oil storage containers in Odessa. These facilities were supplying fuel to Ukrainian forces in Oysk in the Nikolaevsky direction. On the night of April 4th, as a result of an airstrike near the city of Lishyshchansk, the control point of the 24th Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces and warehouses with ammunition, weapons, and military equipment were destroyed. Meanwhile, in Kiev, the Ukrainian authorities and local journalists appear to be trying to capitalize on the Russian withdrawal. On April 3rd, Ukrainian journalists shared footage showing several alleged dead bodies in the streets of Bucha, where Russian forces were stationed. Of course, Russian servicemen were blamed of committing a mass shooting on civilians when leaving the area without any real evidence. The bodies seen in the footage have not been identified yet. The Russian Ministry of Defense said that Kiev's information about the mass killings in Bucha was not true and that the footage was staged. The ministry stated that all the facts irrefutably confirm that the photos and videos from Bucha are another staging of the Kiev regime for the Western media, as it was the case in Mariupol with the maternity hospital as well as in other cities. According to the ministry, all units of Russian troops completely withdrew from Bucha on March 30th, and these shots appeared on the fourth day after that, when SBU officers and representatives of Ukrainian TV arrived in the area. During the stay of Russian soldiers in Bucha, not a single civilian was injured. 452 tons of humanitarian aid were delivered and issued to civilians by Russian servicemen in the settlements of the Kiev region. The Ukrainian claims are likely meant to disturb the military operations of Russian-led forces as well as to mount more pressure on Moscow. It is also possible that nationalists in the Kiev regime are attempting to sabotage the ongoing peace talks. As a result of Kiev's provocation in Bucha, member states of the European Union claim that they are going to tighten sanctions against Russia and strengthen military support for Kiev in defense issues. Despite Kiev's attempts, Russian-led forces are currently regrouping and resupplying their units as well as securing Mariupol city.
The forces will likely develop their operations after the full liberation of Mariupol.